Good morning, everyone. Hi. It's Kaiba on the Renegade. I'm back here with more Elden Ring, but I can only level up through co-op. And today, we're gonna go marry Rami, I guess, and become Queen Consort. Is that how that works? I think that's how that works. We're either Queen Son Consort or, like, Consort King or something. I'm not actually sure. But either way, uh, we have to go up here to do it. And we weren't actually able to put our co-op sign down in Renala's boss room where we got the ring for Rani. And we weren't able to do it in Estelle's boss room either. So I figured we might as well start in Estelle's, take the elevator up, and uh, then we can do our co-op up here after we get the bonfire right away. Grab that. Open this, and bam. Now we can go ahead and do our co-op. Oh wait, oh that's right. We have to actually find one of those signs to summon other players. Shit. I'm surprised there isn't one here, by the way. Because I've looked around here and I'm pretty sure that there isn't. They don't want you to summon someone for a doula. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess we'll uh, do our PvE first. We clear our souls for nothing, but that's okay. Go kill a doula here, and then uh, give Rani our ring, and then we'll leave the plateau forever and never come back. Because there's literally no point in ever being here. Once you get the starlight shards, that's basically it. Go, Torrent, go! I swear if bats come out of this ruin and fucking start fighting me, I'm gonna be so annoyed. The dude was about to disappear. Well, at least that hurt Torrent and not me. Which, no offense to Torrent, it's just... I want to live. Because if I live, we're all happy. Nobody fucking likes you. Because you're a bitch. Sword time? Anything to draw out your last 
fucking breath on. Piece of fucking trash. I'm sorry, I have a long-standing hatred of Adula, and I will likely continue to. I also have a long-standing hatred of Patches, but fucking... I'm kinda over it, he is endearing to me now, but at the same time, still wanna murder his face every time I see him. Yeah, there we go. Get all those starlight shards. And, uh, yeah, that's basically our PvE for today. We just have to go marry Rani, which is, um, a sentence. Really? Oh my fucking word. It's fine. We needed to clear our souls anyway. It just annoys me that it was out of my control. I was going so gently, and then he just throws himself off the fucking ledge. Like this, nice and gentle. Wow, that was hard. I don't know what possessed them to make this hole deep enough that fucking you can insta-die like that, but I guess they really just wanted to say fuck you. Alright. Let's marry a doll. Why not? I mean, I guess she's not really a doll. It's just her body, right? Her soul was once... Empyrean, I guess? Which is... Not human or tarnished. But, like, we don't... We don't actually know, like, what the classification of the normal races are in Elden Ring, you know? Like, tarnished is a normal race-ish. But, fucking... What are the maidens? Are they, are they like, what are they? It's an interesting question. Because they're not tarnished, right? So that would mean that they're something else. And the obvious answer is, well, they're humans, because they look like humans. But, I mean, Raya is a maiden, and she's a snake lady. Not saying all maidens are snake ladies because Raya is. Don't you fucking do that. That is not okay. Don't just run out and jump on me like that. What is wrong with you? Yeah, go eat your dinner. Jeez. So, Sorry, she just ran out and jumped and hit me right in the fucking face. I bid thee, and once all is done. Um, but yes, now we have married Rani. So we're all good there. Just grab us a... Uh, Dark Moon Greatsword. Yes. Now we'll get the fuck out of here. Uh, that's her whole quest line down. We've done basically everything in uh, Lim Grave and the Weeping Peninsula. And most things here in uh, Kaelid and the Dragon Barrow. At least the things we want to do. And Lyria is looking pretty cleaned up. So, um... Although, it is true that we haven't actually, like, done the dungeons for a lot of these. Uh, why don't I check what dungeons I have and haven't done real quick. Let's see, we've got Tombs Word Catacombs, Black Knife Catacombs, Road Ends Catacomb, and the Double Pumpkin Head Boss and Kaelid. Um... I'm thinking let's go to Road's End Catacomb, because I've seen some cool stuff there. I think there's like a spirit collar boss here or something. So we might find some good like uh, ghost glove work for other things. Not that we really need it. Oh, I remember this dungeon. This is the one that's full of uh, fake walls. And it is full of these. That's grave glove work. That's what I was thinking we'd find here. Not ghost, but grave. Which, by the way, the first time I played this, I literally didn't even know there was a difference. And I imagine almost every player had a similar experience. Until they, like, wanted to upgrade something and found out. Did I beat this? I already beat this, guys. I already beat this dungeon. 
I'm gonna cross that off my list. Hang on, let me look at it again. Here we go. Although, actually, I've just thought of something. Uh, do I have the Sacred Blade Ash of War? Because if I do, I'll stick it on my, um, my Omen Cleaver for a minute. It's so nice to be able to just completely heck these guys. Just no sir, I don't believe in skeletons and he's dead now. I don't believe in skeletons, I've never believed in skeletons. Cartilage is a myth, and calcium only makes Markiplier want to kill you. Resurrect that. I think if you've spoken to D basically at all, you'll find his summon sign here. Oops. That's right. I don't actually have the strength to wield that unless I two hand it. But we want the range that this weapon will give us. Because, like, don't get me wrong, the fucking. Um, the cleaver's a great weapon awesome but at the same time you got to pick the right tool for the job you know and Howard gives us range that the cleaver just doesn't because it has range that's it's actually that's basically its biggest asset is that it's um, more or less like a great sword but it's got range, and it's got that big fucking sweeping motion. Oh, I'm thick, I'm good. I'm not. Am I about to be? Nope. There we go. That was pretty close. Uh, yeah, the the um, curved great swords are really, really versatile. Their biggest problem is that they stick on the ground too long after um, after delivering a hit. But honestly, it's not that big an issue. Uh, most of the time, if you're spaced properly, you're gonna hit your opponent, and either they're going to react in a way that you can avoid. Or they're going to react in a way that fucking won't matter anyway, you know? I know that was very non-specific and non-script, but... <clears throat> it just feels like that's kind of how it shakes out a lot of times. Giant crab! Deathblight crab! Oh, fuck. Stabby crabby!
There we go. What's the actual main boss here? Is it a, um, a shade? Oh, I'm glad I picked that up. I wasn't going to. And then I was like, eh, fuck it, I'm right on top of it. So I picked it up, and it's actually a really good item. I use those in invasions a lot. Time to find out what's behind door number two. Wow. We two shot him. Alright guys, well thanks everybody so much for watching. I've been Kaiba on the Renegade. If you like this video, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Hope you have a great day. Bye bye If you'd like to support me with more than just a subscription on YouTube, you can do so by buying, reading, or listening to one of the audiobooks or the actual physical or ebook copy of one of my books in my book series, Godly, about demigods in ancient Greece in a world where all pantheons of gods coexist. I like to describe it as a combination of Dragon Ball, Harry Potter, and Avatar The Last Airbender in a world that's very based on mythology. So if you find yourself interested, there are links in the description, and you can watch and listen to the audiobook right here on my YouTube channel. Thanks so very much for watching, hope you have a great day, Bye bye